Good. Good to have you. All right. Okay. Let's get started. How about that? Because we've got to have a kind of a fun agenda for this morning. We're gonna we're gonna do some problem solving, uh, group problem solving here, and we'll have fun with this. Okay. So you can make it. This is an interactive learning experience. It's more than a webinar. This is actually where you get a chance to ask. Uh, and, and talk and we and and as long as your uh, questions relate to the day's topic good morning Robert as long as they relate to the day's topic we will include them if we can and have time uh, in the things that we discuss and so we make that very interactive which makes it more valuable than just simply a tutorial replay uh, follow this step and do this and get this outcome we try to have a different kind of experience here for this um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is I want you to really to be uh, do a good job of supporting each other, both in the webinar and also in the group and the other places where we might be uh, or other encounters with each other it would be helpful if we can be very supportive. Uh, always be adding to the creative environment. Uh, supports one of those things that, that does that. Understanding that you are in a um, in, in an interactive learning experience helps to add to that creative environment where you can ask questions. Richard, if you have a question, go ahead and just post that and I'll, I'll catch that, okay? Um, we're going to look beyond just the how. This is not just about the step-by-steps, but this is kind of a why. And we'll talk about some whys this morning. And I think that's going to be kind of fun, okay? And then most of all, most of all, <laughs> we're going to have fun, all right? And because uh, I, I like to have fun, I like for things to be fun. I, I like for this to be a fun experience. And I honestly believe that creativity thrives in a fun environment. Um, many, many companies have taken that on as a philosophy now that they uh, uh, work best in a very fun, creative environment. So um, I think that that's a, a extremely important. So Rose is saying, and, and I want to remind you all of that, that if you have technical questions, if you have uh, stuff relating to billing and account issues, then you need to reach out to support and uh, not try to address those inside of the webinar. I can't always do that. Uh, Rose is here to help us to kind of redirect those things to the places where they need to go. Okay. Nope, never had too much fun. That's right, Terry. Um, very, and it is fun to be creative. It's fun to look back and go, ah, I did that. That was pretty cool. And so we, we definitely want to do that. I realized this morning, I always save this slide for last and um, got, got a few things going on. This is my, it's my daughter's birthday and my sister's really sick. And I kind of got distracted just a little bit this morning, kind of catching up on all of that. And so I forgot to change my inspiration slide. I always do this one. This is my last slide. Uh, put this up just before we uh, just before I go on the air and I just completely skipped this one this morning. This was from last week, but it's still as applicable today as it was then. So as we run through these slides from the group, just keep that in mind your thoughts, whether they're positive or negative, they form your results. <clears throat> if your thoughts are frustrated, guess how your results are going to turn out. If your thoughts are exciting and creative and fun, guess how your results are going to turn out. Your thoughts help to formulate your results. And so keep that in mind. Uh, it will help us as we go. Uh, yes, you have to see it in your mind first in order for you to see it in your life. One of the greatest quotes of all time had to do with Walt, Walt Disney's brother when they were finishing the first Walt Disney World um, they, his brothers, uh, the contractor said, it's too bad that Walt couldn't be here to see this. And he goes, no, he saw it way, way long time ago. And that's just really important that we see these things in our mind first, and then we see them realized in our lives. And that's, uh, that's kind of where I was going with that comment, but your thoughts form your life. So, um, this question was posed. And so we've talked about this a little bit, how to create uh, some of these kinds of things like this, a stack of books, uh, be able to layer these on top of each other, be able to layer these on top of each other. Uh, this is a little bit different. We can't do this with the tools that are inside of Uzine, uh, but there are some places where we can do that. I'm not going to tackle this issue today, but I will tackle it at another time and I'll show you why. I'm going to give you the first half of it today and the second half of it we'll do next week. But this was an interesting question because every once in a while you want to do something that's just a little, uh, pardon the expression, but a little sexier than just a, a, a book cover. And so this is kind of uh, more formal than that. And so, um, but you can do some things very similar to this with Uzan and we'll be talking about the first step of that today and we'll do the, the next step next week in the in the webinar next week, okay? Yeah, I, I, I 
I'm, I'm, I apologize if if that term is ever offensive to anybody. It, it, it's not to me. It kind of has a it has a, a certain appeal to it. So um, the next thing is this was the question that was asked right here about organization. We've tackled this organizational issue a couple of times and talked about moving things uh, in, into folders and that kind of stuff. And I think there's a, a piece of the instruction that was given to Andreas that is missing here. And so I will, uh, I, I didn't want to post that in the group till I posted until I shared that with you all this morning. And uh, then I want you all to post it and help help each other. Uh, it, this, is, this is part of why we do this. And I go through these questions that are posted in the group is so that you can help somebody immediately because those of you who <coughs> who this happens to be the middle of the night um it's going to be the middle of the day when it's the middle of the night for me and or or for somebody else and so it's good for us to all kind of know how to give direction to each other so that we can support one another as i said in the in, in the uh in the opening agenda. Okay, so we'll talk. We'll tackle this organizational issue in just a little bit. And I, I want, but I wanted to make sure that you all understood where that was coming from. This was a great question. This was a great question. Andy Lee asked this question: Is there any way to fade from an image over here into a, a uh, an area over here that would allow you? to be able to put text over here when you have an image over here and there's a couple of ways to do that ray uh put two things out here we're going to we're going to tackle a couple of others of those issues today i'm going to show you some things to watch for and some things to look out for and you'll see them in just a little bit in the agenda but this is this is pretty fun and this is a great thing to do we've done this with layering we've done this with the blur tool and uh, so we'll talk about that a, a little a little greater depth in just a little bit so the next thing was this written by L, and I really appreciate this um, because this is this is pure from the heart kind of a thing, and, and I think it was really good. I, th I thought this was a great explanation. If you all have not read this, then don't stop in the middle of the webinar and go read it. But as soon as the webinar is over, the very first thing that comes on when you click out of the webinar, the next thing that pops up is Usine. Facebook group. So jump in there, take a look at that, find this, uh, this quote by Elle, because I thought this was really, really good. She talked about the value of the community. Community is such an important thing. And we do this webinar every Friday consistently, not because we have a whole bunch of new things to share with you, not because we're trying to pitch something to you, but because we're trying to create that, that sense of community that makes all of us grow better together. And, and she expresses that here in just a couple of paragraphs, and I really, really appreciate that. So thank you, Elle. I think the rest of you, thank you as well that um, this was this was a good reminder, not the thing that we talk about every day, but something that I think is really important for us to be reminded of occasionally. And I, I appreciate that. OK, Dale, thank you for um, for the for for being on with us today. This is this is Dale's first webinar. And um, and he says he's appreciated the fact that we have them regularly every Friday, Dale, for as long as we can do this, we'll have a webinar every Friday. I, I think there's value in this. And I told you all last week that I had set out in, in 2018, I was going to focus my attention on how to build community. And while things moved where we didn't have something new that we were constantly introducing in, in Usine, I was able to focus the attention on helping this community to become stronger. And uh, I, I've, I've just loved that focus for 2018. And uh, I think it's reflected in the in the You Can Make It webinar um, emphasis that we have now. Gene posted this was a great example of using uh, images created in Usine to create a video. I really like this. And y'all get this. There are ways for you to create promotions. It's not always an image. Sometimes it's a video. Sometimes, and what Gene did in this case was he took this, um, this section right here, this overlay at the top here, and this overlay here, 
and then created a video that ran in the middle of that. And we talked about how powerful these two features are of being able to frame a video. And, and we looked at one last week um, that, that, that inspired us to do this right here, okay? Richard, thank you. I appreciate it. I, 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 I usually recognize when people are, it's their first one, but, but, um, but, but thank you for pointing that out to me because sometimes I miss that. And we want you to feel very welcome and we want you to be very much a part of what we do. Okay. And I really like the way Gene did this. This was really a cool idea. Uh, I actually am going to take that and apply it to some things that I'm doing. So uh, this is how we grow together. This is the thing that, that, that as we share and we put these things out there, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. When we do these spontaneous kind of things like we did last week with the overlays, we do something kind of, it's, it, the, the, you're not going to follow that step by step and do exactly and reproduce exactly what I did. But the, the purpose is to inspire people to do what Gene did right here. And it's really good. So thank you, Gene, for sharing that. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I think that's going to help all of us. Now I want to talk about a couple of things that we kind of tagged on to in the last few weeks. And the last week I talked about the kiss stickers. And I'm realizing that this is a great thing to do. I mean, this is a great opportunity for us to do this with logos that we create for clients. And I talked about using this these KISS stickers and putting them on your laptop. So when you go to the coffee shop or putting them on the back of your phone. So when you go to the coffee shop, uh, people get a chance to see those. And I, I told you a story that I, I had $200 in sales the other day because I opened up my laptop and they saw my kiss sticker on the back of my laptop. I mean, how cool is that? Right? Would you all like to get $200 because you opened your laptop and they saw your sticker? That's important. Uh, Ray's in the promotional products business. He does T-shirts and and and. But but here's the thing that that this is just another little add-on. We use exactly the same company to fulfill this. But these kiss stickers are really cool. These are kind of popular right now. <laughs> this is a kiss sticker right here, Michael. This is th these are cut out. This one happens to be see-through in the back. You will see a little outline around the outside of that, but um, they they look they they look just exactly like this. This is one. This this is a screenshot of the top of my laptop. But this is a great opportunity here. Yes, always be sure to put the upside down on the, on, on your laptop. Uh, I have to remind myself of that when I have them on, um, but that's really pretty cool. Okay. So the next thing is, I want to take this one step further. We talked about developing a shirt um, a, a, a while back, and, um, uh, and and I made a shirt for my grandson. We did that with 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 the same company that does the stick the the, the kiss stickers. We made that, and then I needed to change the name on something that we were doing, and I decided that I would take the very same because remember what we could do with. Um, in Printify, we could add layers of, of information. We could add layers of stuff to the, so we, we could, we could change and modify and move things around and, and add stuff and subtract stuff. And we could actually build the, the, um, the creative on the top of the t-shirt that was designed there or on the coffee cup or, or, uh, some of those things that would allow you to be able to do that. And so, um, So I took my T-shirt that I'd made for my grandson. Does anybody remember what the what what, what the what I put on the outside of that that T-shirt to my grandson? Anybody remember that? Because I'm about to reveal it. But I took that and I decided to add something because I can't use a phrase that I really like to use, like, but I can't use it because it's not um, um, it, it's copyrighted. So I took the download beast mode, added the word marketing to it, and this became. Uh, the Beast Load Marketing 101, uh, and I have a I have a course called Beast Beast Mode Marketing 101, and I just simply took that same creative that we had done the T-shirt design that we've done for the grandson, 
and I put marketing below that, put it on an adult shirt, and there you go. So uh, again, one of those things that this made, this was really, really easy to do. I already had all the stuff in Printify. I just needed to add this one word right here, which was easy to do because of the way that the platform is designed. And this is, you're exactly right, Jail. This is, this is all about, all about repurposing things. Okay. I told you about the three words last week and this repurposing is just simply talking about this word stewardship right here. How important it is to be able to do the stewardship and and repurposing is the greatest stewardship thing that you can do all right and then again we talked about this and some of you, some of you have already mentioned the importance of simplifying uh you think that this doesn't have impact this has huge impact right here okay so again you can see how those three words which i had determined were going to be my three words for 2019 come into play into everything that we do, everything that I do. And um, and, and I, I try to make that my emphasis for the whole year, being a good steward, simplifying everything that I do and making uh, so that I can make the greatest impact possible. Yeah, <laughs> smart, I appreciate that. Um, these this became really easy because I don't have to figure out how to do this. I just have to figure out how to put the creative on it, right? And we went through a process of that. We spent about three weeks, which seemed like it was an awful lot. But this is a great opportunity for you to be able to take what you have. I mean, think about this. What would somebody pay for this right here if, they, if you could create a logo for them, you know? Yeah, Ray says you just canceled three rarely used services and saved over $500 a month. Again, simplify. Be a good steward of what you have. Simplify your, your process. Simplify your platform. I'm about to show you the next one, okay? This next one is this. And I'm going to have to show you two things for this to make sense. This is a, this is a training platform that I have. And I made some really awesome looking creatives that went over here, but then, then they didn't match each other. And the problem was that when I put them in a the collection, then the, this creative right here, you know, that had images in it, just look in the group, just look in the group, you'll find them, um, the recordings. So I had I had these really, these really, uh, to use Elle's uh, phrase earlier, we had these really sexy looking kind of creatives over here. Um, but the problem was that when they went here, then I had this, this image in the back ground here and the white lettering on the top of it looked terrible. It looked terrible. Well, rather than being frustrated by that, rather than being, okay, they've got to change something. They got to make something different. And rather than do that, rather than do that, what I decided that I would do was that I would color coordinate these. So I would have a color that would be designated for each area or each category that could go together. All right. So I, I, I opened up uh, another platform that we all talked about before and created a color palette. What was the platform that we talked about before? All these things are connected. There's a reason why I give you all of this stuff. What was the platform? See, y'all are having these conversations and you're missing the, the, the point I'm trying to make here. G, you're exactly right. I took the, the, the coolers thing and, and I put that together and I created a palette. So here's my palette right here. So I, I just, I put together a palette and I put a title. These are categories inside of this platform. This training platform has these categories in it. So every single product that fits in the category of networking looks like this. It will have this background will be purple, right? It'll be this purple color because this one goes from black at the bottom you can see how it goes from black at the bottom to the color at the top. 
So what I did instead of being frustrated by it was I simply created categories with colors. All right. So I have categories with colors. And now when I put the color in, I can create this right here. All right. Because this is how it's going to look in the background. Make these things work together. Then I got to thinking about, hey, this is going from black at the bottom to this whatever color that is. I'm colorblind. So whatever this color is, it's at the top, this orange kind of looking color, whatever that is. What we're doing is a fade technique, right? That's that's exactly what we're doing. So all these things fit together. So I've taken this this um, I, I created this color palette with what however many this is. What is that? Four, uh, nine different categories here, and I took those nine categories that are inside of this training platform, and every one of these titles that are going to be uh, promoted over here fit in that color category right there. Does that make sense to everybody? Are you now following what I'm doing? Because I'm going to take this one step or two or three steps further in just a minute. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure, because sometimes I lose people because it's really clear in my head, but I want to make sure it's really clear to you. So I'm, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these, these colors based upon this color palette for these categories. And so whenever you see something on this platform that has this color right here, you know that this is going to fit in that category um, that is represented right here, online business. So whatever you see over here is going to fit in that online business purpose. Keeping it very, very simple. Now, obviously, there are going to be things in here that are going to point people to, to click on one of these links over here. That's what we're trying to create. We're trying to create this, this synergy that takes place between the way this looks because that's built into the platform and the way this looks because this was something I needed to add. But I used it to create this these categories based upon certain colors. All right. Which, you know how I did that. I took my color. I took this color palette right here. Put it into the designer. This is one color palette. This is another color palette. There was nine of them instead of ten. Uh, and I took those color palettes. I dropped them into the into designer. Put the titles over the top of them. Then I put them on top of this. And, and each one of these titles that I would write in here, I, I would drop the top color would be the color from the uh, from the platform. We'll sh I'll show you that in just a little bit, so you can reproduce that. You can do that kind of thing if you want to do that. Now. I don't have any idea what I just said. Um, I have a problem is that I'm the trainer for Uzine and I'm the trainer for designer. And they sound so much alike that there are times when I use them interchangeably and I apologize. So thank you all for correcting me um, because I need that sometimes. So I appreciate that. And I try to keep them the best I can straight in my head, but they don't always come straight off my tongue. Okay. No, thank you for thank you for clarifying that because I don't want to I don't want to confuse anybody. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Gene says it shows you I'm right there in the corner. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, my problem, Bob, is that I I struggle because I'm human all the time, and I I I do so much of this. I mean, I was I had a two hour gig last night with designer, so uh, it 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 gets long. Okay. All right. This is the this is the question that was asked by Andy Lee. How do I fade? All right. And so I, I screen cap this from the from the uh, canvas and I see an issue in this. When I screen captured this, I see an is issue that I want to fix. <clears throat> I see two things. I've only eliminated one of them in the next image that you're going to see. But who sees what I see in this image? I wanted this to be, I wanted this to fade to black on this side over here. Do you see this line right here? 
that line goes out into this lit area over here. And I, I didn't see that until I, I didn't see that till I screen capped it. And I went, oh, there it is. The other thing that drives me nuts, there's about three pixels difference between the top of this line and this line right here. And so I would eliminate it. That this makes me fall out of my chair. This, I, I try never to have a straight line it, that is close to an edge. Do y'all see that? Another just simple thing to keep in mind, because what will happen is some yo-yo like me will look at that and go, wait a minute, there's a difference between the gap right here and the gap right here between this line. And this is in the frame of the, of the door. It has nothing to do with the... Uh, uh, yeah, we see those things. And this is a perspective issue. Um, this is a great shot of this. Exact. That's the problem, Tammy. You don't you don't see it until I pointed it out. And then once I pointed it out, you can't unsee it. And so I, this this is something that you always want to try to i would i would have slid that image over and cropped this off right here but this shadow issue there do you see how the do you see the difference between this and this just simply slid that over a little bit to the side because this did not line up with this this lighted area right here so i had to move that over just slightly and made that work okay then there is a shadow up here that was creating this almost i i, I don't know what else to call kind of a holographic looking sort of a thing right here And by sliding that that over so that it picks up and kind of fades in this direction, made that look better. Now, the, the shadows were all there to begin with. I created the, the I'll show you what the image looks like here in just a minute. But I wanted you to see that, that sometimes you just got to kind of test this out and went, oh, man, that doesn't look good at all. And then I moved this over and it was like, OK, that'll work. But you'll see the shadows that were on the original tool are on the original image, and that makes all the difference in the world. Okay. All right. Are we ready to open up the canvas here and take a look? Because I am. Let's do that right now. So give me a second to change my screen. And I will move from those images right there to the next thing. Let me do one more thing. I want to open up another window. I'll do that before I log y'all in. Okay. I'll be it. All right. All right, do you see my Uzi dashboard now? All right, so this is the question that was asked earlier by Andreas was, was how do I move a bunch of these things at the same time? Here's the easiest way to do this. And, and, and I, if you do this, just type in the word Webby, which, you know, I've showed you this before. That's the reason why I was in my search engine there. But when I type in Webby, now I'm not scrolling through all of my images, only the images that I've saved because we use them in webinars. Now I can select some of these and I can move them into a folder, but I'm not searching through all of them to find them. This makes my life really easy. Does that make sense? 
we, we let, we allow ourselves to get bogged down instead of using the tools that we have. Now I've mentioned numerous times that it's probably a good idea, probably a good idea not to save every single design that you have. But if you will do that, then we can create a folder. All right. I can create a folder. And I can bulk move all of those to a folder now. And I can move them over to this folder right here. I have now moved all of those that I just designated into this folder right here. See? The tools are there to make this e easy for you. The tools are there to make it easy for you. If you don't know where to find them or how to use them, you'll be frustrated. Again, being frustrated causes what to happen to your output. It's going to be frustrated. So I selected those images by clicking on this little image or this little icon right there. And that's how you select those images. And then you have the option up here to bulk move them once you've started that process. When you click on that, it gives you a list of your folders and you can move them from there. Okay. Really simple to do. And it makes your life really easy if you do that. Yeah, exactly, Rose. Thank you for mentioning that the root folder is the main folder where all the designs are saved by default. But if you'll create other folders and um, that's your root folder right there. If you'll create other folders and then you can drop those into these other folders over here and it cleans up your dashboard. But this is, this is something that most people just didn't know that you could use. Okay. And this will save you a ton of help. See, now this is, I, I just want to show you this. This is one of those really sexy backgrounds that I had made. And I went, ah, that, that's as cool as that is. It doesn't, it, it, it didn't look good when I had those other images on top of it. So, or had the other words on top of it. All right. Okay. So that's just a really clear little organizational thing to do. And if you get in the habit of, of, of putting the correct, uh, a name on there, that's easy for you to remember and why you have to have that image there. Okay. That'll help you a ton. Um, going down the road when you get a bunch of images in here. I try not to keep a lot of images in mind. Notice I have 529. I've probably created 5,029 designs, but I, I don't keep every one of them. There's no reason to keep something all the time. If you, if I, if I'm going to make a single post on Facebook, there's no reason for me to keep the image because I'm going to change the background the next time. And surely I've saved the text so that I got the text format someplace, right? And while I'm moving to the different dashboard here, had an interesting discussion in a Facebook group with a lady who said that she was frustrated by the platform that she was using because she couldn't import her font into that landing page builder. And she needed her brand, her font branded properly. And I simply said, no business ever failed because of a font. And I got this lengthy explanation about Coca-Cola and how important the, the, the font style is the Coca-Cola. And I, I, I bit my tongue because I wanted to respond back. Yeah, but they don't write all of their ads in that font. It's only their logo. Capture your logo as an image and use a font people can read. We stumble over the wrong things is my point. Okay. Did y'all get that? Let's do this. I want to show you this one first. Okay. Okay. So what I did was I have this gradient background set up and I click on this image right here. I grab this and I pull this over and now I've created this red color at the top fades to black over here, which was exactly what you saw earlier in the conventional format that that particular platform is in. So this is really easy to do. That's the reason why I have these up here. And I saved them like that. And I'm going to show you something else I'm going to do with that in just a minute. But you see, did you see how I did that? Click right here, open this platform up, and now I can go over here. I can, that again, this is one of those gradient going from here to here. Okay. Do y'all understand that? Make sure we're clear about that. 
because there's something really cool I want to do here. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to change the format to this and make this a lot bigger. I'm going to show you something cool here. Okay. Is I want to take this right here, which I think I've saved this uh, graphic as a group. I think I saved it as a group. Maybe I didn't. I didn't save it as a group. Okay. So, um, what I can do, all right, and I want you all to stick with me here for just a second. I'm going to turn this, make this transparent. If I want to create, remember the stack of books that we saw a while ago? If I want to create this so it looks like a library, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show this to you. If I want to reproduce something that looks similar to that, I'm going to need this spline right here. Is that correct? Guess where I have it at. And guess what tool I'm going to use. Get rid of this. I'll take this. And I'm going to rotate this. All right. Get this straight. Hold down my shift key and that'll put it at, at, at a straight up zero. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do, take my crop tool, right? I'm going to take my crop tool right here. I'm going to capture this. Did we talk about a crop tool recently? Take my crop tool just like that. Now I'm going to save it to the library and I'm going to crop it. All right. So now I'm going to I'm going to reposition this to what would be appropriate for the spline. Make that a little bit bigger. Now, what am I going to do next? <laughs> yes, thank you for that, Melody. Melody said we did talk about and you didn't look. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my background here and I'm going to move this to a gradient. All right. And I'm going to, I can do this if I want to, or I can just simply leave it like this. Put this in a solid right here and make that my color. And now I have my spline. How easy was that? Now I can take that. And I can start to build this out with this spline on the top. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to use this stack, by the way, because that would be a little bit too much work to, to create that. But I can reproduce something that looks like that very easily. And then in the in, in the place where I have the categories, in the place where I have the categories, you'll see the this image right here, and I'll have that. But do you see how that crop tool becomes handy to you? How much work did that take? I could have saved it as a group. That's true. And I could have done it as a group. That's no problem with that whatsoever. But this is another way to do it. I hope that makes sense to everybody and that you go, I, there's not a problem I can't tackle. When you start to think that way, do you understand how you can you can you can accomplish more because you're not limited by what you think the tool can do? While the tool may have limitations, your imagination does not. Do y'all agree with that? So now I can take these and I can stack them up, create books, spline covers. I can put that in a mock-up tool that does just splines. I can do all kinds of cool stuff with that. 
next week, Art, we're going to talk about how do we create the stack. And I will show you how to create the stack next week. It's a little beyond the scope of what we want to do here, but that's the reason why I want to do that next week. Okay. Uh, we'll start with that next week. Uh, I said that early in the agenda that we were going to take that little thing that, that Andreas had asked, how do I create this? I'm going to show you how to create some things that, that, that will work for you. Okay. But once you start, stop thinking that your thinking has to stop at the limitations of the tool, uh, then you've got all kinds of capabilities. And that's the point I wanted you to see right here. Now, next week, we will take each one of these from this image right here. We'll take each one of these and we'll create, the, we'll create nine splines, just like this, or spines, or uh, however you want to call that. We'll take nine of these bad boys and we'll recreate the the uh, um, those in the platform, okay? You're, you're right, Geraldine. That the, the troubleshooting, problem solving approach makes you valuable. It may even make you invaluable to your clients. They can't live without you because you have the ability to be able to find solutions that they hadn't thought of. But being able to use my crop tool and just save that, how cool is that? All right, let's go to the other challenge that we had today. Problem solvers are the most highly paid of all professionals. Exactly right. All right, let's go to this one right here. <clears throat> all right, this is my image. And um, I'm going to bring it to the front so you can see it. All right. You can see that the light is coming on the perspective. The light's coming from this angle, right? Here. It's coming from this angle right here. Okay. So it's kind of a mid morning sun angle that's coming here. You can see how far this shadow comes out here. When I was dropping that other one right here, it created that kind of what I call the holographic effect, which I didn't like at all. The, the, the shadow didn't work. All right. So again, this is my image. And because of this line right here, which none of you could unsee after I showed it to you, what I would do is I would eliminate it from the, from the, uh, from the image completely. So now we'll move this to the back again and we'll play with it for just a second. So now it's at the back, but because I've moved it over, you can't have this little gap right here because that little gap isn't going to work very well. Y'all agree with that? The reason why I like this image is because it has a shadow in it and I can, I can work with the shadow. Um, I'm not sure I understand. I'm, I'm not sure I'm following you, Deb. Um, Deb's asked the question, can the shadow be more transparent as it fades? So you see it under the image a little couple of things that you could do here. Um, <clears throat> I could have made multiple. Let's move this. Let's move this back to the top. I'm going to show you something that could have been done here. Okay. This gets a little tricky, but I could have made multiples of this image. All right. Now I've got four of these images right here. I could have made four of these images. I'll go to my first one and I'm going to leave it the, 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 how it looks. I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to reduce the opacity on it. All right. And now I'm going to line it up perfectly with the other one. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to reduce the opacity. Now, this is a lot of work. You got to decide whether this is actually worth the effort or not. <clears throat> I'm going to make this one about 60%. And I'm going to move this one on top. I'm leaving this thing on the side, so I've got a, a place to index this at. And now I'm going to take the opacity of this one. I'm going to move it down to about 30%. Big jump with this. Okay. 
I haven't done this. It just kind of popped into my head. And you want to make sure that all your images are not blurry. So I'm going to have to pull this over. That's the only one that's that's creating the blur. So let's get that so it's positioned perfectly. This is going to be a challenge for me. We'll get it right here in a second. Still slightly blurry. There we go. There. there we go. No, the shift key will not line those images layered on top of each other that way. All right. Um, I was just using my arrow key until I could see the the, the edge of this can line up, and um, and I'm really close. I'm close enough for what we're going to do here. But this is the challenge that you have. I, I have those stacked up the way I want them. All right. And so these, I have two images right here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull these to the front. All right. I'm going to pull them forward. Do you see, did you see what happened? I'm pulling that forward. So I pulled that forward. I'm going to bring it one more time. Now you see how it's starting to, to fade in there? I'm adding that shadow in, all right? Now, I wanna get the next image. There's another image here, which is gonna be harder for me to reach because that's in the way, there we go. Now, this, this one, I wanna bring it forward, but not all the way, okay? Now, do you see what's happening to my to my image? Do you see that? I, I, I can't always tell what y'all see, so you're going to have to help me with this just a little bit. Now, do you see what's happening? Because I'm moving that between the layers, and I have different opacity in the layers. That's a good question, Deb, right here. I, I'm able to see, I got, I got to bring forward and then I've got to bring to the front. If I bring it all the way to the front, that's where it's at right now. So I need to move it backwards one layer. Now I want to do the next thing and that is I'm gonna duplicate this one. I'm gonna duplicate this one. So now it's a little darker here. And I'm going to reduce the opacity on it some. Now do you see what's happening? You can't. The problem with doing what JL's just what Geraldine's just asked here is could, couldn't the black overlay be a gradient if 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 it were not quite for this wonderful approach? The 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 the, pro, the problem is I can't make a gradient out of. A, a, a vector box. I can't create a gradient with that. Um, so I, I have to I have to use that the technique that we're using right here. Now I could have created that box by using the gradient in a box, saved it as an image, and then reduced the opacity of it. I could have done that. That's a, that's that's three more steps in the process than what we've done right here. But um, but again, I can just move this. I start moving this to the front, move that last image all the way out to the front. And now I've kind of faded this in. I would have to line my images up a little bit in order to get them to go exactly where I want them to go. But see, I want that I, what I, I want to catch the edge of this shadow right here is what I want to do. Right? I want to catch the because if I have this right here, it's not fading. So let's let's see if we can catch that edge of that image right there with that. There we go. Like that. Now it starts to fade. 
Understand? Again, you just want you have to decide how much work do I want to put into making this work? Because I can I, I could diddle with this for a long time and make it pretty awesome. How's that look? And see, we've gone from, I, I took that, I'll bring this image all the way to the front. Oh, I can't because I got those layered images there. But but by, by recreating the layers of images and then sliding my shadows in between them, can you see the difference that that made? Take my top image here and increase the opacity of it a little bit. And then my, my shadow falls in a pretty good angle right there. All right, any other questions about that? Now, I, I do want to show you this so that you'll, you'll get this. Um, where I got this image right here, I created it with the blur tool. See this? I, I created it. So the edge of that, the edge of that, has a deep blur to it. I'm going to show you, I'll, I'll, I'll increase the opacity so you can see what I'm talking about here. When I increase the opacity of that, I'm going to move it over here to the edge. Do you see this blurred edge right here? I created that blurred edge. If we did not have the blur on there, that's what you have. But can you see how much, how much I, I was able to fuzz that edge? Now, it's doing it all the way around this image, about the entire image itself. So I had to create the image much larger than the canvas so that the top of it wouldn't look blurred as well. Yes, I created the shape. And in this case, this was the shape right here. Come over here. This was the shape right here. I could have used this shape as well, but either one of them didn't make any difference. Um, but I created the shape, made it that 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 deep black color, and then used the blur tool to fuzz the edge of this and then played with it using the opacity. But that allowed it to be able to fade and put the fade back on this that allowed it to be able to fade. Like that. Okay, any other questions about this? It's kind of a fun technique. Um, but remember, you can you can make multiple layers of this and slide those images in between the layers and get a completely different effect. And I did that just using this tool right here. And I played with these by sending them forwards and backwards. This is a great image for this because it it's 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 doing the very thing that you wanted to do, right? Yes, now I could now I could easily come over here, grab text. Let's take a text that looks immediately good out of the box grab this and if i put that up there can you see how that would look and then i would left justify this and i'd stack my text going down this way
Any other questions? But yeah, that then then I would just build my text here. And um, and I used this at an angle simply because I was taking the angle from the uh, because Melody asked a question about the shapes. I, I, I grabbed that angle and twisted it sideways so that it would match the direction of the sun coming this way. Does that make sense? You have to make sure that your, your stuff works together. And for me, even though this has a sharp edge right here, this has a shadow. And remember, we, we, we spent a couple of weeks talking about shadows and what to do with them. Uh, because of this shadow and the angle of it, I thought that this should come at an angle like this that kind of matches the angle coming from this. So I would fade the black in the same angle that this is. And again, thank you, Art. This is not intended to be a step-by-step. -step. You do this to reproduce exactly this image. This is intended to show you how to get from here to wherever you want to go. Again, that's more about the why than the how. Okay? All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. I, I really do. I genuinely appreciate you coming in on Fridays, spending this hour with us. And I, I try to respect your time. So it's straight up on our about now. And uh, we'll wrap this up and we'll, we'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place, everything as normal. Okay.